Hi everyone, it's Jen with OpenSource.com bringing you the top five articles this week, October 10th. Every week I tally the numbers, listen to the buzz to bring you the best of what we've published this past week on the site. At number five this week we have an article about Moodle. It's titled, Moodle Will Always Be an Open Source Project. Samantha Gardner is from Moodle and she writes to us to share an update on what the open education platform has been up to lately. I'll share with you three important um, sort of dates that you should know regarding Moodle and their, and their newest moves. Um, actually, this first one is not a new move, but it's just a good to know. In 2001, Moodle was launched as an online solution for educators to freely adopt as a tool to reach and engage students in the learning experience within their own websites. So that's where Moodle got started. Then there was some controversy over reports that Blackboard bought Moodle, but that is in fact not the case. And in 2012, Blackboard purchased two of the Moodle partner companies out of 60 total partner companies as part of their strategy to, to diversify their support for various educational technologies. And finally, today Moodle reports that they will stay an open source project. Hooray! They are licensed under the GPL version 3 license and will continue to follow their core open education, open education philosophy. All right, at number four this week, we have Elasticsearch director tells us how the magic happens. This is an interview by Robin Mulwick, one of our community moderators at opensource.com, of Leslie Hawthorne, a well-known figure in open source. She is also the director of developer relations at Elasticsearch. Um, which is the company behind the open source ELK stack that you might be familiar with. So chances are you have heard of Leslie Hawthorne or you maybe even had the opportunity and um, privilege to attend one of her talks. Um, speaking of privilege, one of her great talks is Why Checking Your Privilege is Good for You. Uh, it's a, a talk that she gave at Scale 12X this year as well as OzCon and I was lucky enough to be able to attend OzCon this year and had a wonderful time and also attend her talk there um, about checking your privilege and it's just a great sort of um, check-in that we should all do from time to time just to make sure that you know we're interacting with people in a positive way and um, being open to um, just all, all different kinds of people and um, walks of life in order to facilitate a stronger um, relationship with people that you might work with or people that you might end up um, having similarities to for um, an open source project. I mean, all kinds of things can come from just being a little bit more open and, and making sure that you're um, communicating with people in a positive way. All right, enough on that. Um, a couple of her other talks are The Keeper of Secrets at FOSDEM 2012, as well as DevOps for Happier, More Productive People a talk she gave at Infrastructure Next in um, this year. All right, moving on to number three. What network function visualization means for OpenStack and open source? Mark McLaughlin is a consulting engineer at Red Hat and has spent over a decade contributing to and leading open source projects like GNOME, Fedora, KVM, Libvirt, Over, and of course OpenStack. In this article, Mark writes for OpenSource.com for the first time about a topic of great interest in the OpenStack developer community. The simmering debate is, what exactly does NFV have to do with OpenStack, and is it a good thing? Find out in Mark's article. At number two this week, we have the right fit for open source projects evaluated. Matt Messine continues on his journey to find the right open source project. You can check out his first article to see his guide for casting a wide net for projects and how to evaluate yourself. This article is his second in the series and looks at his past track record with a few open source projects and his evaluation of those experiences. Then he makes his final picks for open source projects and an evaluation of which might be the best fit. So I'll leave it to you checking out the article to find out which one he chooses. Finally, at number one, we have five talented women in open source you should know. Adam Levinson spotlights five talented women in open source you should know in tandem with the Grace Hopper celebration this week. 
which is the largest conference for women in computing. Um, a little bit in my article that you'll see published on Sunday, that's the top five article, is um, just a little excerpt from Wikipedia about Grace Hopper and who she is. Um, she was an American computer scientist and a United States Navy Rear Admiral. Um, she did a lot of great things in computing. She invented the first compiler for computer programming language. Um, she's credited with popular, popularizing the term debugging for fixing computer glitches. Um, and she was sometimes referred to as Amazing Grace for all of her wonderful contributions to the uh, United States Navy, um, to computing, and to just, you know, American inventions in general. So um, check her out, really neat lady. Um, and so there's this conference that has sprung up around her inspiration and um, it's become the largest conference for women in computing, um, at least in the U.S., perhaps the world, I'm really not sure, but it's, it's quite big. Um, I'm, I think this year they had about 8,000 attendees. Um, so this article, our number one article this week, um, has done what really well with readers, um, and what Adam did was he highlighted five people in open source, five women in open source, who are doing some really great, neat things um, to kind of uh, go in tandem with the Grace Hopper uh, conference this week. So I'll list out who those people are. They are Carol Smith, Open Source Programs Manager at Google, Jennifer Palka, Executive Director of Code for America, Katrina Owen, Founder of Exorcism, Denise Cooper, Head of Open Source at PayPal, and Leah Silber, Core Team Member of EmberJS and Co-Founder of Tilde. So check them out. They're doing very cool things and um, really pushing open source forward. So that's good to see. And um, check out all of the article links in the notes below. And then also in the article that we published on Sunday that is basically um, everything that I've just told you in a big uh, written down roundup. And join us next week. Thanks so much. Bye.